Now, this part of the lecture is very, very interesting because we have cases coming up in New Jersey right now that I find very, very interesting, uh, since I'm hoping to retire in one of those places. And of course, again, remember, the privacy, the, uh, the right to property we have, that's under the Constitution, that's a primary source of law. And of course, the need to protect the environment, or the need to uh, preserve endangered species, the, the need to, uh, c the town or the state of New Jersey or the county, they have police power. They have to do, they have to make decision what is the best for the, for the community. What is to keep the community alive, to keep the community uh, great and not to let it become, I guess, uh, a dumping ground. Uh, like a Camden or something like that. We want to improve our cities. We want to gentrify. We want to get rid of old buildings and make everything look nice. So this is very interesting because when is a regulation a taking? And at what point does the government pay the owner for restricting private property rights? And this is where eminent domain comes in, where it's a constant, that under the Fifth Amendment, we're going to go over this. This is very, very interesting. Uh, the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution, and of course we also have every state have their own constitution that has to be even better to protect individual rights than the federal constitution, gives the government the power to take private property for public use. Now, we had cases, what is property? And I want you to know, and which was very interesting, property is also what is in our mind our education, our, our creativity. So um, in New Jersey, um, we were, uh, in 90, sometime in 1989, uh, 1990, I can't remember the exact year, but I remember I just graduated from, uh, from law school and I passed the bar. Uh, lawyers uh, had to give so many hours of pro bono, uh, that, which means working f as an attorney or represent uh, the poor people uh, that cannot afford an attorney. And what a bunch of attorney they went to court because they say, "Hey, government, you are taking our property, that's intellectual property, without compensation for public use, and therefore it's unconstitutional." And I want you to know that we won. So now every year, um, every year we get a form, and they're asking voluntarily if we want to do pro bono service, and not that though it's mandatory for us to do it. So this is an example that I, I want you to know. Yes, they can take private property. They can take, but it has to be for public use. And if they're going to take it for public use, then you have to be compensated. And in this situation is what is public use. And the Fifth Amendment attached an important condition to this power, however. And that is when private land is taken for public use. Now remember, public use, the landowner must be given just compensation which is market price. An ongoing legal debate has to do with whether environmental regulation that limits private property owners' uses of their property constitute a taking of private property in the public interest. Now, here comes the EPA telling me that I cannot use my property for the good of society. And if we go back to the hypothetical, it's because somebody's spouse needs the the lizard that it's in my property because it might stop or cure or, rem or have remission about cancer. And that would, is that public interest? And this is the big issues that we have. What is public interest? And in New Jersey, we have a couple of cases coming up in Long Branch and Asbury Park where they are taking down all the whole houses and build condos all along the boardwalk. And of course the people, you know, some of the people don't want that. They bought the house a couple of years ago to retire down there, and now the government says, well, we're going to buy your house because we want to build condos. And of course, their justification or their reasoning is for the good of society, for public use. And well, what is public interest? What is public use? And the, the mayors of this town are saying that with building condos, we're going to have employment, uh, a lot of work, a lot of jobs for people there. Uh, more uh, income, higher taxes, um, tourism, they can rent the condos and, and have tourists coming from all over the United States, if not even from other uh, part of the world. And that will bring more money to the town and therefore with more taxes, we can, buy, we can have more police, we can have more protection and safety for the community. 
and it's very interesting in some town um, also to build malls and again more taxes more jobs more employment and therefore it's good for the community for the good of the community and did that is that what the Constitution meant public interest is that what the Constitution meant as public use and this is where this part of the lecture is very interesting if so the property owner should receive the just compensation guarantee under the Fifth Amendment in some cases, the court have held that the property owners on this issue in favor. That, you know, yes, that the taking of the EPA, this is again an environmental situation. Um, they have to pay the, uh, the owners. And in some court, instead, they cited, in some court, decided with the government regulation that the, the landowners were not entitled to any compensation. And this is started as early as 1954. Uh, this is why I shared this case with you Berman versus Parker where the owner of a profitable department store, which happened to be located in a slum, tried to block the District of Columbia from exercising its power of eminent domain. Now, here is something where it's a department store, it's in a slum, so that means more jobs, and they try to block uh, the uh, district court. They don't want uh, to sell. They don't want the, the government to take their property. As a way of dealing with urban plight, the district had decided to raise certain areas of the city and rebuild. The court refused to second guess this use of police hours. So in this, in this case, the court is going what? With government. This concept of the public welfare is a broad and inclusive. The value is represent our spiritual as well as physical, aesthetic, and as well as monetary. This is the court reasoning. It is within the power of the legislature to determine that the community should be beautiful as well as healthy. This is for the public interest. Spacious as well as clean, well balanced as well as carefully patrolled. So the town won in this case. It's okay for the town to destroy certain area of a town if it doesn't look nice and if it's not healthy and if it's not clean. The government then may regulate a private property in ways that drastically reduces its value without paying compensation. 1954. You have a very interesting case in your textbook, the Lucas case. What do you think of the whole notion of eminent domain then, comparing with the Lucas case? This is a question that underlines Lucas case decided, and this was in 1992. Read the entire case in your textbook and compare Lucas' case to the following contemporary legal debates. Now, we keep in mind the 1954 case. And now, read the Lucas case in your textbook, which is 1992. Here we have some new cases coming up, Asbury Park and Long Branch. And again, here is the government want to take the property and they want to have just compensation. And some people do not want to sell the house. What do you think is going to be the result of this decision after you have these cases in your mind? Um, is Long Branch will be able to uh, take down all these old homes to build new condos because is Long Branch is going to look nicer and the same thing Asbury Park is going to look nice? So this will be very interesting. The one case uh, that, you that you don't have in your textbook but i like to share with you is the Monte Dunes and Monterey City versus City of Monterey, 1996 case. Our owner of oceanfront property in Monterey, California, had, a, had applied to the city of Monterey on several occasions for a permit to build residential development. This is California now. You know, all the good cases come from there. Each time, the city denied the use of, of the property until none of it remained available for any use. Every time he applied, the uh, California uh, town, you know, or the state refused it. In effect, the entire property had to be left in its natural state. No more building. So I can see that, you know, I like my trees. And I, there are many times now in New Jersey, we're building like crazy, and we're building more malls, and, and somehow all the trees goes away. And, and to me, I feel like, oh, here we go, more pollution. But then again, think of this case. The city claimed that it was seeking to protect various forms of wildlife that in inhabit the coastal sand dunes. Now, this has nothing to do with pollution. This is something to what? To save endangered Smith blue butterfly. 
That's it. Uh, it's nothing to do with polluting right now. This is something about uh, save uh, somebody, uh, some species of butterfly that uh, if we build, they will move to someplace else. If they move at all, they probably die. Eventually, the property owner sold the property to the city and then sued the city, claiming that the restriction on use amounted to an unconstitutional taking without just compensation. So here is the, the, the California taking uh, the, the city, taking these uh, owners, pay them compensation, and then they sue because they thought that that was unconstitutional to save some blue butterfly. The jury, the jury awarded and agreed that the owner 1.45 million in damages. In this situation, the jury won, or let's put it this way, the plaintiff won, um, because they were going to, uh, um, they got paid for their property uh, to save some butterfly. The award was affirmed on appeal, so you know that then uh, the uh, contractor, the state of California, appeal again, and the, the appellate court affirmed for the plaintiff. The city then appealed to the United States Supreme Court, arguing that the question of whether a taking had occurred should have been decided by a judge and not a jury. Many times, the peers, I mean, as an attorney, we even learn how to pick jury that's going to make me win the case. Um, it's very, very interesting. I mean, the decision has to be by your own people. And they felt that uh, if they have the judge making the case, the judge would favor uh, the town because, you know, the judges uh, get paid by the taxpayers, so he's going to support the town. Uh, where our people is going to go more with the landowners because they themselves probably own the house, so they're going to feel for the landowners and not for the city. And they're going to protect more their right to property. In 1999, the Supreme Court, however, held that whether a taking has occurred is a predominant factual question. It's a question of fact and therefore a question for the jury to decide. Uh, very interesting. It is a fact if it, that's a taking or not for public use and public interest. The De Monte Dunes case was regarded as a victory for property rights advocates. For state and local government, however, decision meant that they would find it more costly to preserve natural resources in their community because they could not buy the property to do so, so it would be more, more, much more expensive. Plus, they went all the way to the Supreme Court, and that's expensive. Now, this other case of eminent domain was very interesting. Now, this is 2002. Now, comparing with 2001, and then you had the Del Monte case, which was 1996, and that's very important, too, the different time, you know, because we change it. Remember, law reflects social changes. And this is very interesting, too, because um, the United States Supreme Court supported the local regulators. So in this case, the Supreme Court goes for the local regulators. The case revolved around an attempt to curb pollution and the growth of algae in Lake Tahoe on California and Nevada border. In 1981, the town or the agency issued a temporary moratorium, remember, just for a while on the construction of residential housing in areas around the lake that were the most susceptible to further environmental damages. Just for a while, it stopped building. And the moratorium was extended over the next several years until 1987. So for six years, people owned property that were planning to build, and they couldn't build because there was a moratorium, always waiting for this moratorium to end so that they can continue to build. In the meantime, some of these people were building retirement homes, some, some people uh, vacation homes. Now, if you had little children <coughs> and, you could not <coughs> and you could not build until 1997, well, if you had a teenager, <coughs> By 1997, they got married. They probably never wanted to come to your summer house anyhow. But 1997, it, it was a revised plan, which is still in effect. So they were hoping that by 1997, they would, the plan would be revised and the moratorium would be stopped. Well, most of the affected property owners were older couples who had purchased their lots dec decades early and had planned to build their retirement homes along the lake. So here comes. Six years passed already. They revised the plan for who knows how long. In the meantime, you are retired, and you don't even know if you're going to be, be around alive to build your retirement home. So I, 
I can see, you know, I, I wouldn't like that either because I'm planning to do something like that too. So the moratorium, however, allow no exception and forbade any land use whatsoever. Always been temporary. And it was going to be who knows when ended because they didn't put any end. The regulations were so stringent that some owners were even forbidden to enter their own land without the agency permission. So here I have this land. I can even go and walk through it. I can even go there and take pictures to show it off to <clears throat> somebody else that I have this land. Ultimately, the owner sued the agency, claiming that a regulatory taking had been occurred. Even if it was temporary, they felt this was a taking. And again, what is the definition of taking? Because next thing you know, they're taking this property temporary. They're not using it to build something. They, they are taking just for a little while because they don't know yet if uh, this will be damaging the blue butterfly. Remember that. Even if the taking was all in temporary, the regulation had forced, forced the owners to give up all reasonable use of their land. They could not use it, and they could not sell it economically and personally for a period of time, and they deserved to be compensated for this depreciation. They felt that, hey, we cannot build, we cannot use it, and we cannot sell it. Uh, the government then should pay like a rent, you know what I'm saying? Like when you're renting an apartment, I mean, you're using it. I, I know so many times when uh, somebody sells a house, but they cannot move in into the new house. So they have to stay in the house that they sold for a couple of more days, sometime a week, sometime two, we two weeks. We use a, a use of occupancy lease, like where they pay um, daily on a daily rate of something, because they're using the, 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 the apartment. Even if they sold the house, they're using somebody else's property for their convenience. So here is something where the agency is using somebody else's property. They should be paying some kind of rent or something. So. The United States Supreme Court sided with the regulators. The court held that the agency action had not deprived the owners of their property for too long a time, and thus no taking had occurred. How long is too long? Remember, it was six years, and they revised the plan, and there was no yet the end of the thing. So maybe it's another six years. So the question then is, how long is too long? The court say no categorical rule could be stated, and the answer always depends on the fact presented. Now, remember, they took these people to, to court again, and you cannot take the same people to court again for the same action. So how long is that long? The court says it depends on the fact. And where do you stand on this issue? How do you feel? How do you, what would you be your argument or you just from an ethical perspective? Should private land owners be compensated when the land is essentially taken for public use by environmental regulation? Should land owners be, again, what is, again, what is taken? What's public use? How long is the questions, you know? I want to hear what you think. Should landowners be compensated even when taking is temporary? Please post your views on these debates between private property rights and public interest in preserving natural resources and habitats for wildlife on the discussion board. I really would like to hear your opinion, your justification, or your logic. And again, remember, present the balance between the individual right of using the property because they have a right of the property and also for the good of society and in this situation is environmental protection. Thank you.